Hello everyone, Gino from DGU here. On uh, Saturday, May 4th, I managed to take 11th place. I went seven and one um, in the Ultimate Cup with Mirage Galgamon. So I thought I would share my deck profile here and just uh, show you my thought process behind some of these cards. I know you've probably seen Mirage a million times, but this is my version of it. This is what I like to run and I'm gonna tell you the reason why you might wanna run some of these cards. So uh, the first thing that makes my Mirage list a little different from the average Mirage list is I am running five eggs. I know a lot of Mirages have been on four or three eggs in the hope that you see the Bukamon sooner, um, but I'm actually running the full five. And the reason for that is I hate security control. Um, I don't want to run out of eggs when I'm playing security control. I want to be able to promote up and get another swing. And uh, funny enough, my final match of the night was against security control and I did win and I had to go through all five of my eggs both rounds. So I'm glad I had them. Um, also, Wanyamon's just a little consistency piece. Um, this way you never have to worry about pushing out early and getting swings and drawing cards off the Wanya. Um, and it allows you to be a little more aggressive with your Betamon as well. Because once your Betamon goes into your level 4, you can swing, get your draw, and you have your guaranteed jamming. I'm running 4 copies of EX4 Galmon. This is the boy. Um, on play, both players draw the top card of their decks and... The inheritable is when an effect adds a card to your opponent's hand, you gain a memory during your turn. Obviously, this helps you extend your Mirage play. If you have the EX4 Gaumon and the EX4 Gaugamon, then you're going into Mirage for two, plus whatever you're gaining back from Mirage, which usually means it's free or you're plussing. Um, but also what's very important about this Gaumon is being able to play him when you're in your burst mode turn, when you have a bunch of extra memory that you've gained back from your opponent's hand size, and you need to add more cards to their hands to get additional swings. You do your, your burst mode play, you unsuspend, and then you drop Galmon, force them to have another card in their hand. Now they're back to nine, you get an additional unsuspend. And Galmon's very valuable, not just for his inheritable, but also for his on play. Next, we're running four copies, of course, of our jamming boy Betamon, BT15 Betamon. Um, he is literally just there for the jamming inherit. Um, you Evo this guy in the back, you put your level four on top, now you can come out early and get some free jamming damage or you just wait until you're ready to, to pop off. Um, enough said. Betamon's a pretty simple choice. Uh, this uh, deviates a little from Mirage lists lately. I think a lot of people are dropping these down to two, one, or even no copies, but I run three copies of the original BT-11 Searcher Galmon. People were dropping this because they were afraid of Leviamon, I think, because for whatever reason, the cards that you don't add to your hand end up in your trash. So then Leviamon is set up to do its shenanigans, but I didn't run in any Leviamon. And even if I did, I think I would still run this card. I think getting the search is really good. The when attacking inherit to bounce a level three if you have a tamer. It doesn't come up that often, but it does come up. It has come up in some of my matches, specifically against Red Hybrid. They were attempting to go wide and I was able to use this Galmon's Inherit to keep bouncing their level threes back to hand so they don't go in trash, which is really important. You don't want Red Hybrid to have too many hybrids in their trash. So yeah, search three, grab a Galgamon in name so it won't grab any of your rookies. So that's why we run the Betamon, doesn't matter anyway. And then one blue tamer and trash the rest. Good search. I wish it was as good as the, uh, um, Marcus's Agumon from the same set where you get four, where you get your in archetype card and your, your tamer, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. We're not the pro tag. So. That's it for rookies. So 11 rookies. Next, we're moving on to our level fours or champions. We're running four copies of EX4 Galgamon. Again, very simple. The inherit is the most important part here. When an effect adds a card to your opponent's hand, you're going to gain a memory. But the when did evolving can come up. You've played your Galmon out. You've dug your three cards. And then next turn, you're already building up another stack and raising. But you have an extra one of these in your hand. And your opponent also played a searcher. You can go ahead and bounce that searcher right back to your opponent's hand. Sometimes that level three bounce is pretty valuable. And it's another way that you can get additional cards in hand. If you're in your burst mode turn and you drop your EX4 Galmon, force them to draw a card. If they still have another body on the board, bam, bounce that level three back to hand, get yourself yet another swing. Um, I did do that at least once this ultimate cup. It was pretty valuable. Next for our level fours, we are running four copies of BT13 Galgamon. This one is your free tamer play. So uh, when you Evo, you don't have a Thomas in play, you get to play one for free. That's really nice. Again, this combos really well with the BT11 searcher because you're going to drop your BT11 searcher or maybe turn one. You're going to dig your three pieces, hopefully this and a Thomas, and then next turn you can Evo it, get your Thomas out for free, um, and then you're set up while you're still building in the back as well. Um, this is also a good card to Evo on top of your Betamon, then you can just get free 
early easy jamming swings and threaten the Zudo Ace play. Um, his inherit is while your opponent has eight or more cards in hand, you're going to get an additional 1000 DP all turns. Um, that sounds nice, but it really doesn't do all that much for you. An extra 1000 isn't enough to really be relevant. Finally, we're running one copy of BT12 Lanamon. This is your hybrid for game, but it is also your emergency. I don't have a rookie to uh, start doing my Galgamon plays. So you can put this on top of your Thomas and then you can go into your mock Galgamon or your Zudo Ace or what have you and then go into your Mirage play if you have the memory for it. That did come up at least once. I didn't have to hybrid for game at all during Ultimate Cup. Uh, having the Lanamon available to Evo on my Thomas and then get another Mirage out did come up at least once and so you know something to think about. You can also tuck a level three to give it jamming. I did do that once as well. And you can also then recycle some of these inheritables. So your BT11, you might need to bounce a level three. So tuck that for with your Lanamon. Or you might just want to get that extra memory gain. Tuck your EX4 Galmon. Or maybe you want to set up jamming for later. You tuck your Betamon. Lanamon's really versatile. And besides just being hybrid for game, she does let you crack back if you aren't finding your rookies. You know, you have your Thomases on board and not much else to do. We're on to level five. So we've got nine level fours. I'm running four copies of BT11 Mach Galgamon. This is the one that for every four card in your opponent's hand, he's going to gain plus 2k DP until the end of their turn. And he's also going to gain blocker. And that can be both a blessing and a curse. Red Hybrid is now running Garudamon Ace, which pops blockers when they play their tamers out. And they do that always on the turn that I have my Mirage as a blocker. I could see cutting this down. I think once BT16 comes out and we have a lot of blockers and redirects, this guy's going to come down for copies of BT13 Mach Galgamon. Um, but until then, this is what we're running with. His Inheritable is also really good when an effect adds enough cards to your opponent's hand, you unsuspend this Digimon. So if you have this on your jamming stack, you can take a free swing, free jamming swing. And then when you Evo into Mirage and force a card into your opponent's hand, you get an unsuspend. I really like this card. Uh, um, it has done a ton of work for me. I'm going to hate cutting it once uh, BT16 comes out, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll still try to run a couple copies of this. Then we're running three copies of Zudomon Ace. Uh, this card is insane, obviously. Um, it's an ace card, so you get to digivolve on your opponent's turn after they've procked all their when attackings. Then you're going to strip any two digivolution sources from a Digimon and then bounce something with no sources to hand. This is just an insane card. You can use him in your Mirage stack. You'd rather not, but you can if you didn't find another level five and you just need to go up. But, you, but the real strength in this card is being able to hard slam it for four and then immediately go into Mirage Galgamon or threaten one next turn, which you can then use to pop off. There are games where you have your Thomases, but you don't have your four or you don't have your three. So you hard drop your Zudo Ace, you go into Mirage next turn, and then you go into your burst mode place. Zudo Ace is just an incredible card. It adds cards to your opponent's hand uh, naturally, and it's just really good card. Then because it's restricted and we're only allowed to run one copy, we run one copy of the EX4 Mach Galgamon. Uh, this one when Digivolving is going to bounce a level four lower to hand, which is great for board control and for taking care of your opponent's ace plays. His when attacking is also nice because you don't have to take an early jamming swing that could be dangerous or threaten an ace play from your opponent. Instead, it's when attacking, if your opponent has eight or more cards at hand, you get an unsuspend. So really good card. It's great when he comes up, um, but it's not the end of the world if you don't see him. Then of course, we're running four copies of the card that gets everything done for this deck, BT11 Mirage Galgamon. On Digivolve, you're gonna bounce a level five or lower Digimon to hand. Um, if you can't, you're going to bounce a security to hand. So unless your opponent's at no security, at which point you don't even need to go into Mirage, um, you're going to add a card to your opponent's hand. And then the secondary effect is in all turns once per turn. For every, When a card is added to your opponent's hand, for every four cards in your opponent's hand, you're going to gain one memory. So this will often, by the time you go into Mirage, you're probably going to be gaining two memory. So if you have the perfect stack of the EX4, Galmon, and Galgamon, you're going to go into Mirage for free because they're going to have eight cards in hand. You're going to gain two from that inheritable and then two from Mirage. And then it's time to just pop off. And then one copy of BT13 Mirage Galgamon. We're running this for two reasons. One, it's another Mirage Galgamon, which means it's searchable. If we didn't find our BT11 Mirage, we can go into this one instead. But there are some matchups where I would actually rather see this card almost to the point of where I'd want to bump this to maybe two if possible. Um, right now, deck space is kind of tight, though, uh, with everything that's in it. But this one has Evade on face, which everyone forgets about. 
everyone tries to pop this card and then you just evade by suspending. Uh, when digivolving, this is gonna bounce a tamer to hand. And then when a card is added to your opponent's hand, all turns once per turn, you get to play a Thomas for free. Um, this card is incredible in the red hybrids matchup. You bounce a Takuya, you get to play your own Thomas, and you have evade for when they try to warp into Emperor Greymon. And that evade has definitely won me games against Red Hybrid and being able to bounce the Takuyas as well. This is a, an awesome card. Really undervalued. People run this because it's another Mirage, but uh, this is actually a very good card. Then uh, if you're running a burst deck, you run three copies of the associated burst mode, and that's exactly what we're doing. Mirage Galgamon burst mode here. This is your game winner as well as your mid game um, because he's going to OTK you. He's going to bounce any Digimon on board when you Evo, and then he's going to gain a memory for every four cards in your opponent's hand. So if you've already bounced something with Mirage and they have eight in hand, you're going to gain another two memory when you go into burst mode, probably for free because you can go into burst mode for free by returning a Thomas thing. This showstopper, if you will, is his when attacking effect. If your opponent has nine or more cards in hand, they're going to randomly bottom deck cards from their hand until they have eight left and that's going to trigger an unsuspend. So there are many opportunities. They're going to have nine whatever, nine cards in hand, you're going to swing, you're going to get your unsuspend, and then you're going to attack again, and during that, when attacking, you're going to find a way to add more cards to their hand to trigger another unsuspend. And you're going to do that until you win the game, essentially. Um, and if you don't win the game by doing that, you'll win the game by other unsuspending shenanigans with your Thomases, which we will talk about in just a moment. Next, we are running a three and three suite of Thomases. We have three copies of BT-13 Thomas Norstein. This is your memory setter, but even more important than setting memory, when you attack with a Galmon or Galgamon, you can suspend him to draw a card. Um, and it also forces your opponent to draw a card. Sometimes you use this for your burst mode play. You attack with burst mode, they have eight cards in hand, then you suspend a Thomas, they have to draw a card, which is gonna trigger the second effect on the one attacking of Mirage Burst Mode and force them to bottom deck something, you get another swing. And you basically get enough swings, as many Thomases as you have on board. It's really good. Don't forget that you can do this at any point in the game. Thomas isn't just your game ender. You push out with your level four, you got jamming, and you don't have all your pieces yet, just start drawing cards, man. Swing with Wanya, you're drawing two cards off this, your opponent's adding one to hand, so you're getting them set up for later. This is just a, a really good consistency piece, believe it or not. Then we're running three copies of the old BT4 Thomas Norstein. On play, you get to draw a card. That's nice. But during your main phase, if your opponent has eight or more cards in their hand, you can suspend this tamer to unsuspend one of your Digimon with Gal in their name. Basically, what's going to end up happening a lot of the time is you're gonna have this Thomas out. They have three security. You have your Mirage out, you're going to swing with jamming. They have eight or more in hand, so you're going to suspend your Thomas to unsuspend. You'll go into your burst mode, return this Thomas to hand, and now you've got three more memory. You're going to swing, do the effect, swing, and now you're going to play this for three with the memory that you've gained back from Mirage and burst mode, and then you can suspend him to unsuspend your Mirage burst mode and swing for game. Um, it is one of the most common ways to end to close out games. That's it for our tamers. Now we're going to go into the option cards. We are running four copies, of course, of Mental Training. This card uh, makes the deck good, basically. Reveal top two cards of your deck for two cost. Add a blue card to hand. Put the, the other one on the bottom. The entire deck is blue, so you'll never miss anything with Mental Training. And it grabs your Thomases. It grabs any piece you need. It sets up your plays for later. This just accelerates the deck so much. Being able to go into Mirage for two and then gaining two back anyway is really good. Um, there's a lot of times when you're just going to stack these up while you stay in raising and let your opponent do whatever they want to do. And then when it's time for Mirage to come out, you push out, you crack all your trainings and you go crazy. Then we're running two copies of Blue Memory Boost. When you've already found your Thomases, but you need your Mirage Galgamon or some other piece, uh, you play this bad boy out for three. You dig top four and you add a blue Digimon to hand, bot deck the rest. Enough said, basically. I could even see myself going up to four, three copies of this. You're never sad to see this card, uh, but sometimes you do wish it were a training instead. Then just two more options. One copy of Full Moon Meteor Impact. You're, uh, the effect is to bounce an opponent's Digimon to hand, and then you're going to gain one memory for every four cards in your opponent's hand. So by default, this is probably six cost at the most. Um, because your opponent probably has at least eight cards in hand when you play this. Um, it's also good to proc Mirage effect. Uh, out of security, it just bounces something. You don't get the memory gain, but if you have Mirage on the field, 
you're going to get memory gain anyway from it. And so you can double up with this. You have Mirage on the field and they have eight cards in hand. You're going to play this out for four. Really valuable. Bounce anything. One copy of this. Uh, because you're already doing a lot of board control with the rest of your deck. And finally, another one of it's restricted, so we play it. It is the Ice Wall. And out of security, you're going to gain two memory. The main effect is for one cost during your opponent's next turn, all of their Digimon gain when attacking, lose two memory. Uh, just really good to stall out turns. A lot of the time when I see this card, I just want it to be in security, so it's like a Hammer Spark. Um, I've considered putting Hammer Spark in over Ice Wall simply to extend plays, but there's rarely a chance when I'm like, man, if I only had one more memory. Uh, not in this deck. In this deck, you gain your memory in, you go ham. Uh, but Ice Wall's a good last chance. I need one more turn, or I need to stall you out for one more turn. And that's the deck profile, but I do want to take a moment to talk about some of my matchups. So in Ultimate Cup, I played eight rounds. I went seven and one, and I faced two Devas, two Red Hybrid, two Mirages, a Mega Gargamon Ace deck, and Security Control. So I just want to talk about some, some key cards and some key strategies in some of these matchups. Uh, Devas is just an instant win for Mirage. Mirage Galgamon and Zudo Ace are going to bounce all of their problem cards before they can ace. <laughs> so you're just basically going to swing. They're going to give you a ton of memory, so you're going to be able to set up for free, and you're going to bounce their level fives before they can go into any of their aces. So it's, it's a very easy matchup. I think it's borderline unwinnable for Devas. It's a very, very difficult matchup. You're going to get a lot of free jamming swings. You're going to bounce everything. And a lot of the time you're going to hit cards that add cards to their hand and their security, um, which is just going to get you another free unsuspend off the burst mode. Davis, very easy matchup. Sorry, Davis players. Um, as Mirage gets better, your deck just gets worse. Red Hybrid. I played two of these. My first Red Hybrid match, my opponent played into the Zudo Ace play um, two games in a row. So I had my Betamon and Raising. I pushed out and went into Galgamon to play out my free Thomas. And then I swung with Jamming and then both games, they tried to swing over my Galgamon, to which I just said, okay, cool. Zudo Ace, return that to hand. Now I'm set up for Mirage next turn. I'm going to go to three memory, and I'm going to gain. I'll gain enough to keep turn and be able to pop off. And that's exactly what I did both games. My second red hybrid matchup, it was super close, but Mirage Galgamon from BT13 actually came in clutch. He forgot it had evade. So he warped into Emperor Greymon and I evaded the pop and he was pretty upset. You know, it's a misplay. You don't think about it. He probably had other ways to out this, um, but that's what he decided on. And it ended up passing him turn because I had Zudo Ace underneath. He thought he would pop it, gain the memory back and then be able to to pop off with Emperor Grey. But then I just went into burst mode next turn, bounced his Emperor Grey, and, and cleaned up the board. Now, the Mirage Mirror. The Mirage Mirror is very interesting because, as is any blue deck that you play, because you're going to be playing the game of, I use my Zudo to bounce your Zudo. And so I think what's very important in the Mirage Galgamon matchup, be the first one to establish your BT11 Mirage Galgamon stack without Zudo Ace in it, because they have to work really hard to remove this. They basically need to go into burst mode or use their option card to get rid of your Mirage. And so if you can establish stack first, and then you can sort of play defensively by slamming Zudo Aces, you're in pretty good shape. If they have to Zudo Ace and then go into Mirage, uh, they've lost, essentially. A Zudo Ace Mirage stack is very easily outed by a Zudo Ace on your opponent's side. So just strip the Zudo Ace, gain three memory. So they played it for effectively one and got rid of your Mirage, and now they can go into Mirage as well. Um, and you basically play that game back and forth until someone runs out of Zudo Aces. Very important to A, try to get Memory Setter Thomas on the board first, because the faster you can make plays, the more time you have to set up, I should say, um, the better. And again, trying to avoid putting Zudo Ace in your stack is going to uh, really pay dividends for you. Uh, the Mega Gargomon deck was the only deck I lost to. Uh, he was able to basically go into Rapidmon. He, he found Fire Rocket both games that he won and was able to chip me away. Um, and I wasn't able to get into a valuable Mirage stack. I kind of misplayed. I went into the play my searcher and then play my Thomas for free. And then he would just push out his terrier mon, go into rapid, go into BT8 rapid mon and pop this. And now I'm stuck starting fresh again. So that was kind of a misplay on me. I've done, I did that twice. 
I think, and I didn't really catch on until the second time when it was too late. I, I thought that it was worth it to get Thomas out anyway. I guess maybe it probably wasn't. Um, and then basically I need to remove his multiple rapid bonds before I can do anything. Otherwise I'm He's threatening a Mega Gargo Ace play, which just stops everything in its tracks. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to secure a win there. And then finally, my final matchup was Security Control. I really I feel kind of bad for the Security Control player because I didn't realize he was playing Security Control at first. I thought it was maybe Yellow Vaccine, because turn one, he just dropped Purple Kari. Turn two, he evoed a Salamon in the back. I was like, oh, this is probably Security Control, but I'm not sure. And I was actually able to just regular Mirage OTK him by going up into my stack and doing Mirage things, uh, because his security was so bad. It was all Digimon. And I was just able to go ahead, go all the way up, do my swing on suspend OTK shenanigans, and win the game. And then the second round, he also had not a great security. I didn't see a single chaos egg either game, so I was able to just pop off. So yeah, that's that's basically it for my Ultimate Cup run and my Mirage deck profile. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to chat Mirage with you. So yeah, this is DG Eugenio signing off. Thanks for watching.